This is the World Today Weekend on CKNW News Talk 980. Once again, here's Sean Leslie. All right, I spoke at length yesterday about uh, some of the uh, documentation released by the NDP this past week. It had been uh, worked on by the uh, folks at the Legislative Library here in Victoria, uh, just outlining how extensive, how intensive the efforts were of politicians in British Columbia and the city of Vancouver, I have to say, uh, to, uh, to stem what they saw as the evils of Chinese immigration. Uh, Ninety different laws and motions passed, uh, whether it was uh, taxes, head taxes, all sorts of taxes tried to apply to the Chinese. Uh, many, many laws uh, preventing uh, Chinese from uh, having the vote, either provincially or municipally. Um, even going so far as to uh, uh, prevent them from uh, accessing uh, care homes for the elderly. Uh, just unbelievable. This is the, the, in the context of the provincial government uh, working, consulting right now as it works on a framework for an apology to Chinese uh, Canadians for historical wrongs. Teresa Watt is the Minister of Multiculturalism, and she spoke about this, uh, this issue earlier today in Vancouver. Today... We continue our consultation with the big people of British Columbia to determine the appropriate wording, delivery, and legacy efforts for a formal apology to the Chinese community in BC for historical wrongs of past provincial governments. We are not just talking about hectares, but what the provincial government has done wrong to the Chinese community in BC in the past. This includes unjust and discriminatory legislations. All right, that was Teresa Watt. Sid Tan joins us now. Sid, a founder and past president of the Head Tax Family Society of Canada. Sid Tan, hi, how are you? I'm fine, Sean. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you're aware the province is going through this uh, uh, this uh, uh, consultation right now. I expect that apology in the legislature sometime this spring. That is what the government has indicated. What would you like to see in terms of an apology and reconciliation? Well, I believe that the apology and redress go together. If you look at the apology, what is an apology? An apology is the acknowledgement of wrongdoing and injustice. An apology should be redemptive to the giver, it should be healing to the receiver, and there should be best efforts made for an ample measure of restorative justice. And there is none here, because the government has set in motion an apology without financial considerations. And we should make clear, this whole apology is about financial considerations. It's about today's financial considerations of trade with the People's Republic of China. The message from the government here, without financial considerations, is very simple. It says, you can do business in British Columbia, you can profit from racism, and not return the proceeds, because the B.C. government is doing that. You know that the B.C. government has $9 million of unjust tax in its treasury, and part of the apology in the restorative side should be a return, a symbolic return of that $9 million. That would be meaningful. Well, okay, but did not the federal government uh, uh, announce compensation back in 2006 with the federal apology? I think it was $20,000 to surviving uh, head taxpayers and their spouses, correct? I'm glad you brought that up uh, because basically only 785 families were eligible for that redress. That is, of the 82,000 families that paid the head tax, less than 1% were eligible for that redress. And that was for the head tax, and the more insidious part of a lot of this legislation was exclusion, family separating exclusion from 1923 to 1947. And we have several thousand seniors that were affected by that, and they're still alive, so it's not historical. These seniors should be the priority of the apology. These seniors should receive more than words. We call on the government to put ideas of justice and honor and marry it to the apology to manifest in a just and honorable, inclusive redress for the 
affected seniors that are still alive. So these seniors, would they be descendants of the head taxpayers? Because my understanding is the compensation, as I said, was available to people who actually paid it or their spouses. You are, we, are we talking like their extended these families? Descendants. These are descendants. These are descendants. The elderly sons and daughters that were excluded from Canada from 1923 to 1947. Let me put it this way. Uh, our current president is 83-year-old Su Chan Soon. She was born in 1931 in China. If it were not for exclusion, she would have been born in Canada. I myself uh, came to Canada illegally as a paper son in 1950. My father would have been born in Canada in 1926, if not for exclusion. So the Exclusion Act was much more insidious. We always talk about the head tax, but while we are talking about the affected elderly sons and daughters of head tax families who were not eligible for the express ship payment. Uh, Sitan, let me ask you this, because uh, some people say, why should we today, Canadians living today, who had nothing to do with this, why should our representatives in government uh, apologize and provide compensation? Well, first of all, it's not compensation that we're asking for. We're asking for a refund of an unjust tax to the families that paid it. That, that should be clear. It's a refund of an unjust tax. Okay. Uh, all British Columbians have benefited from this for over 100 years. And we are talking about $9 million. That, that's basically a very small drop in a bucket compared to what this $9 million would have been worth uh, when it was paid. Let me put it this way. It cost $23 million to build the Trans-Canada Railway. $23 million was collected in head tax. In other words, the Chinese not only helped build the most dangerous and difficult part of the national railway through the coast and Rocky Mountains, they paid for all of it. That is a contribution to nation building. And I believe that those families that are asking for a just and honorable inclusive redress, the ones excluded from Harper's unilaterally imposed settlement, should have a voice and they are just engaging in the political process. They are making their views known, and those views are that government should not profit from racism and keep the proceeds. Were you surprised? I don't know if you had a chance to look at any of the material the NDP released this uh, week, said, uh, but uh, I wondered if you were surprised at the extent of, of the racism uh, you know, at that time and all this discussion of, of the evils of Chinese immigration and the need to, to keep Canada for white people. No, I was not surprised by that. I was surprised by the number. Uh, there are many I didn't hear about, but the ones that I knew about directly impacted on my family were Chinese head tax and the exclusion. And the fact that if you got a degree in engineering or medicine or anything like that, you couldn't practice as a professional. Yeah, it, it was just stunning. So you, you clearly don't have uh, a lot of faith, a lot of confidence in what the Liberals are doing uh, here right now with this apology because it does not include the return of this $9 million. Did I read you correctly? Do you think it, it's really... That is, that is correct. Yeah. And this is only a symbolic return. When you think about it, it's very symbolic. And it, it, it works out like if the government takes a dollar from my family or me unjustly and apologizes... Does it mean it doesn't have to give me the dollar back? And you think that maybe the, the push for greater trade with China, with Asia, might be some of the politics behind this? Am I, did I, did I, did I uh, infer that correctly? Well, I can only draw from the example in 1998 of Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan of the United States, uh, announcing uh, an apology and redress for Japanese Americans in 1988. And as you know, Brian, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney uh, walk, walk step with it yes. a few months later. And why was that? That was because of the rising economic power of Japan at the time. Always comes back to politics. Sid, I'm out of time. Great to talk to you as always. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sean. Sid Tan, uh, founder, past president of the Head Tax Family Society of Canada. Again, I will open up the phones uh, after the next segment to, to finish out the program. Uh, if you want to respond to what uh, Sid had to say at uh, 604-280-9898. After the break, uh, Golden Globes go... Uh,